If you're in the business of making a live VR 3D production, you need a video switcher system that will switch the two channels synchronously. And if it's not embedded in the same signal, you need two video switches that will work perfectly in sync. And you also need a control surface that will respect this nature. So it's not enough to just have tri-level sync on your uh, switches. You also need a control panel aware of that sync signal. And we made a solution for that. I think it it's probably the world's first broadcast panels that will take into account the vertical sync of your video signal so that your switching uh, commands will arrive at the exact right time to make sure you have frame accurate switching of the two video channels. So in this video we'll uh, explore how this is built in, how it's, it's been projected to be built into our controllers since we are currently working on um, on it on a prototype level. It's, um, it's all on my table here and uh, you can see how we have hooked up some electronics that basically we have a sync generator that will um, let the vertical sync into the unit and the unit will use that to make sure the commands sent to the video switches will arrive at the exact correct time. And we'll take a look at how that actually looks. So let's first take a look at the panel we have here on the table. So we have set up an XC3 with a T-bar fader, um, selector for color one, color two, uh, bars and black. So I don't have any actual video sources, but I use uh, these sources, then I have uh, cut and auto. And the reason why this makes sense is if you look at the software panel for the ATEM switch. So I have an ATEM 2ME production studio 4K. And uh, when I uh, press the buttons on my panel, you see I select color generator one, uh, probably color generator two, we can't see it in the panel. Uh, bars, you can't see it either, but you will in a moment on the video feed and then black, of course. And uh, you can see as I press the cut button, I'm actually cutting. Great. So um, the same thing happens if I go to another switch. So um, a switch on another IP address and when I'm connected to it, then notice how the same button presses and actions will actually generate commands on this switcher too. Hmm, interesting, huh? And now the point is, if you look at the video here, as I'm now pulling the T-bar, then notice the two video signals you see. They're not entirely in sync. So um, let me say it like this. What you see on the left side is one of the switches. What you see on the right side is the other switcher. And uh, so I'm basically sending the T-bar commands to both of these switches at the same time. But they are not in sync, as you can see. One switcher seems to be in front of the other one somehow. And what I must do now is to turn on my sync generator. So I'm going to do that. That's what I did right there. Then let's just see as the switches will catch the sync. We should see a change. And there you go. Great. So as you can see, the sources are actually moving pretty neatly together at this time because they are now synced together. So I, I didn't do anything on the panel itself. On the panel, I'm actually just sending uh, T-bar signals whenever um, I want. It's not aligned with the sync. It's only the switches being synced together now. And that was definitely an improvement when I, I did this wipe transition. But what I also want to do now is to make sure that um, I'm not sending a command to one switcher and the other switcher at, at a, a bad time. And that would be in the middle of the vertical sync or uh, basically before and then after the vertical sync. Because then one command would hit the switcher and it, it would react one frame before the other one which would sometimes create a glitch in the car. Let's see if we can actually um, provoke such a glitch. So if I do this repeatedly, I might be lucky to see that the one side gets black before the other one. And I have to admit, it is a little bit difficult to get to that exact spot. Ah, there we saw it. There we saw it. One side, I think it was the right side, that went black before the left side. And that's exactly the effect we want to avoid. So what we basically do, is we uh, use the electronics here to align, uh, and I can see that in my uh, serial monitor for, um, for my um, panel here. You can see that 
Uh, in the serial monitor, you see a number which indicates how many times a second it goes through its run loop. And what I'm going to do now is to move. I'm going to move this pin. Right. You see in the serial monitor now that we have 60 times per second it will go through this run loop. And that means if we execute the cut command or any of these, it will be perfectly aligned. You don't see any problems in the middle between these two signals. You saw a little bit before, you don't see it anymore. We won't have any glitches when we do a cut because the commands to both switches are basically sent at the exact right time. Uh, right after the vertical sync, the XE3 is going to send out a signal to both switches. So how did I do this configuration anyway? Well, first of all, the whole sync stuff means that an XE3 panel will have a BNC plug on the back side where you connect a tri-level sync. And with that sync, you could have that this panel switch the sources synchronously at the right time, just after the vertical sync. Now, uh, the configuration generally of this panel is also just awesome. And it it just proves how valuable the Unisketch operating system is on these devices because it's really not much different from how the panels ship with the default configuration. So I'm now showing you the online configuration for this particular panel. And just notice, I only set up these four, the T-bar, the cut on the auto button. And let's just go explore. You see, when I press button number one, I'm going to select color number one for the first datum switcher and color number one for the second datum switcher. So just notice how we have two actions for each button. Two actions for one switcher, the other switcher, and so forth. And the same thing is true if I go to the cut. You see the same thing. I'm sending a cut to atom switcher number one and a cut to atom switcher number two. And why do I have two atom switches anyway? Well, because I simply installed two device cores on the XC3. I could even install 16 device cores if I wanted to, or 14 or something like that. You won't ever need that, I'm sure, but you could. You could control eight ATEM switches at the same time. So to recap, we have assumed that we have two streams of video, probably like a stereoscopic vision, 3D virtual reality something, going into two different ATEM switches. And with the standard issue XC3 controller running on Unisketch platform, it's so easy to set it up to work with both switches at the same time and send the same commands. The only thing we needed was to make sure that everything happened also time-wise at the right time compared to the vertical sync of the video signals. So we hooked everything up with tri-level sync, including the XC3. And that's the exciting thing that our controllers are able to take a tri-level sync in and make sure the commands you send are also aligned with the sync signal of your video facility. And that's pretty unique.